Hello there. Today we're going to bring in one of the most important concepts that I feel in order of operations. And, and, and what I mean by that is we're going to talk about the, the exact role that brackets play uh, in terms of figuring out questions that relate to order of operations. Now this is very important and it uses some key concepts we've already talked about, but now we're going to apply them at this important level of understanding uh, exactly what role brackets play and how we we deal with brackets uh, before we deal with everything we've talked about so far. So this is sort of the, the, the first step, quote unquote. Let's get started. So what are the required tools today? Uh, let me go ahead and grab my laser pointer here. Uh, first of all, keep a pencil handy. Uh, you do not want to use any kind of pen. Uh, you might make, make mistakes in order of operations. In fact, it's quite common. Um, and so uh, having that on hand, being able to erase quickly is very beneficial. The second thing I want to say is to obtain a scientific calculator. Now, this is very beneficial. Um, of course, only use it for checking your work, but obviously if you want to check your work at home, the best way to do that is to have that scientific calculator on hand and ready to go. Um, that's it. Positive attitude, get ready to learn. All right. So when we look at an order of operations question, uh, it is common to actually have brackets in the original problem and work through them as you solve the problem. So let me uh, just highlight terms as I go here. Um, just to make this a bit easier on your end. So, when we look at any order of operations type question, right, um, it's always common to have brackets in the original problem uh, and to work through them as you solve the problem, like I said. Uh, so, what is a bracket and where does a bracket appear? Um, so we talked last time about parenthesis, right? So a bracket occurs anywhere that has that typical bracket shape uh, that I've highlighted right there, but it cannot be a parenthesis that we talked about last week. So what does that really mean? Um, the the first point I want to bring up is that it doesn't it doesn't just encapsulate a negative sign uh, and a number. So it usually has an open end and a closed end that are very far away from each other, right? Um, and uh, let me show you what this means by actually showing you one of the brackets in this question. So if you look at this bracket right here, um, and if we sort of go through this question sort of step by step, um, you can see here that one of the uh, one of the important points when we're looking for a bracket is two brackets that are pretty far. And I'll go over what this means in a second. Uh, the second sort of dead giveaway for, uh, for me, and this is a very important one, is if you ever have a situation that looks like this or that looks like this. Now, why is that? Um, if two brackets open or close at the same time, you basically say that the inner bracket is a parenthesis. Uh, in other words, it has that whole uh, negative number idea. And the outer bracket is an actual bracket. So let me give you two examples of this in this question. All right, let me give you some examples of where this applies the most. Well, if we look at our question, we sort of go down the line here. Um, we do see this double bracket situation, first of all. It comes up right here. Right now, that's a dead giveaway of a bracket because, of course, it wouldn't make any sense to have a double bracket surrounding a parenthesis. A parenthesis will only surround a negative number and its sign, and that's it. So, what do we think here? We think, okay, there must be a bracket somewhere, um, and that's true. So, right here, let me just erase this. Right here, we do have a parenthesis, right? So, we still have a parenthesis that is right here. That is a parenthesis. Right, actually, I'm going to make that inside. We do have a parenthesis right there. But what I want to show you is that that doesn't cover this. It actually, if we look here, and if we look here, this entire thing is a bracket. Right? It's a bracket with a parenthesis within, and this is a very common way of having a bracket. If you're ever confused as to whether something is a parenthesis or a bracket, you're not really getting it. You're thinking, oh, there's negative signs and this and that and the other thing. Just look at that double, the double bracket opening or the double bracket closing. That will normally tell you a bracket is either starting or ending respectively. 
right? Uh, so again, if a double bracket opens, um, likely a bracket will also open. That's the outside bracket. And if a double bracket closes, likely a, a bracket has also closed. That's what's happening there. Okay, uh, what about the second one, the, the, the sort of easy one? It's a bit harder to spot, but once you get good at it, it gets really easy. So look at this right here, guys. We have these two uh, parentheses. But here's the thing. None of them encapsulate a negative number. They're pretty far apart. So that would be a case where we identify our brackets. And there's obviously no other brackets in this situation. Uh, every other situation where it looks like we might have a bracket. So here, here here, 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 and here. These are all not brackets. Why? Because they are parentheses. And we talked about parentheses last week. All of them, if you look at them, it's literally just a negative number and the bracket. That's all it is. And uh, that obviously does not qualify as being a bracket. So remember, a bracket uh, encapsula encapsulates more than just a negative sign and the negative number. It's all about the entire operation. So you'll have addition, you'll have subtraction, you'll have multiplication, you might have division. You won't just have a negative number. That's the point I want to hone down here. Okay? All right. Uh, let's do a quick exercise. So I'm going to uh, give you guys five minutes. Let's see if the... Uh, the timer here is going to play. I know we had some issues with it last time. But all I want you to do is in these questions, I would like you to identify the brackets. And we'll talk about where they are in a second. Okay? So let's see if this is going to work here. Okay. See you in five minutes.
All right, so that is the time. Hopefully you had the chance uh, to basically review um, the concepts and let's take them up now. So uh, again, we're going to color code them. So a yellow bracket is a regular bracket and the green bracket we can identify using my little life hack. Um, so we can use uh, that little life hack very quickly in, 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 uh, in question number five. Let's do it quickly. So where do we see a double bracket either opening or closing? Well, let's see. We have one right here. We have one right here, which easily means uh, we know exactly what, we're, what we signed up for, right? Um, there is going to be a bracket opening right there. That's which is exactly what we expected. Um, and so here is a bracket, right? Uh, we know this bracket cannot terminate right here because that is the parenthesis over here. So that won't work. This won't work either. That's that's another parenthesis. So it has to be this one. So this entire thing is one of our brackets. And likewise, this entire thing is our second bracket. Okay, so just to make that a bit more user friendly, I'm just gonna, gonna, gonna go ahead and highlight the whole bracket, including the parenthesis within. Right, and of course, right here and right here uh, were our little triggers, right? Those are where we can recognize the double bracket opening or double bracket closing. There's no other brackets here. Uh, you might look at this and think it's a bracket, this negative six here. That is not a bracket. That is a parenthesis uh, because, um, you know, it's just around one negative number. So we can get rid of that. Uh, the next question, question number six, uh, we can quickly take this up as well. Uh, again, at the very beginning, always do a scan for your double brackets. We see a double bracket situation happening over here. Um, and so it can't be this one. That's a parenthesis, though. So it has to be right here, right? So this entire thing is going to be a bracket. Again, I... We'll clean that up for user friendliness sake. And again, this is our dead giveaway, right? Um, the other bracket is actually very small and subtle. So I, I would believe you if you just made a mistake here. Uh, that's this one. That's actually a bracket. Um, even though technically I said a bracket shouldn't only have a negative sign, this is not even a negative sign. That's a minus sign, right? Uh, the negative sign uh, is what we have when we have parentheses. Right. So that would be a negative sign. That's telling you to add a negative number. Uh, but uh, the other one is definitely not just a negative sign. So you want to be careful with what numbers exactly you're placing where. OK, um, so that is that. Those are the two brackets for question number six. Let's move on. Question number seven. Uh, question number seven does not have any dead giveaways. Uh, so we're going to have to stick to our traditional uh, yellow brackets, the regular ones. And again, you're just looking for parentheticals or little bracket things that open up relatively far from other ones. So we have one over here. Whoops. That's not a highlighter. Right there. Uh, we also have one right here. And we also have one right here. Uh, again, uh, I'm just going to cross off the ones uh, in the previous couple questions that were not brackets, so you get a feel for what the parentheses look like in this kind of scenario. Right? Uh, and then obviously the parentheses inside brackets themselves can't be brackets, so that, that doesn't even make sense at all on a matter of principle. Okay? So hopefully all of that made sense. We do have one more question, and again in this question, we do not have any dead giveaways. That's okay. Uh, we're just going to go back to our traditional brackets. Here's one. That's it. There's nothing else. All these other ones are simply parentheses. Okay. So that is what you should have come up with in the previous exercise. Okay. So, uh, we always deal with the brackets first. We, we want to get that out of the way because brackets are they just tend to be clunky and not very friendly to work with. Uh, we always want to get them out of the way first, right? Um, so I, I will now reuse my technique to bring back the brackets. Let's quickly identify them one more time. So in terms of our dead giveaway, we have one here. Uh, so this is going to be our first bracket over there. Uh, and we have one that is not a dead giveaway, which is right over here. OK, um, so we've we've done this first step here. We've already identified all of the brackets uh, that is done. OK, um, now 
Once identified, we want to label each bracket. This is pretty easy. We have two brackets, so this one is going to be B1, and this one is going to be B2, right? Uh, the numbers 1 and 2 in this case are just your subscripts. That's it. Okay, so we've done that as well. Now, write out each bracket separately. Of course, we can definitely do that. Uh, when we do this, we do something special, right? So I'm going to use my blue here. I want to try and highlight here. You always remove all the parentheses. Uh, that is not blue. You always remove all the parentheses that were in the original question, right? Um, so let's go ahead and do that then. Okay. Uh, right here we've got uh, 6 minus 4 times negative 2. So let's go ahead and do that. We have B. Oh, that is blue. I would like to go back to our red color for the pen. Okay. So we have B1 equals, right, uh, 6 minus 4 times negative 2. It's really that simple, right? Uh, all you want to do is you want to put uh, your um, your calculation in, in, uh, in a way where any adjacent signs are just list are listed like are listed vertically, and you don't want to have any parentheses when you're actually solving the question. It just doesn't work that way, right? Uh, so we're done that. Um, let's also do bracket two, so I can show you step two separately. So for bracket 2, uh, we've got 3 times 4 minus 3 times 4. No parenthesis there, no funny business. So we've got this step out of the way. Now, we want to circle the bracket and solve the bracket. Okay, so let's go ahead and circle. Um, as we discussed previously, our circling technique, we just have a 6 over here. And then we have negative 4 times negative 2. That's going to be another circle right there. So again, when we circle, we isolate all of the multiplication and division questions inside the circle by only opening or closing a circle when we approach a plus sign or a minus sign, but not a negative and not a sign in any type of parenthesis. Okay? Um, same idea, 3 times 4 will go in here, and then minus 3 times 4. Right? Uh... And at this point, we can go ahead and actually solve this. I'm going to switch back to my red. Uh, 6 is just 6. Uh, we have two negatives in this case, so that will make it a negative 8. Uh, 6 minus 8 is equal to negative 2. Okay? For B2, uh, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 3 times 4 is equal to 12, and 12 minus 12 is equal to 0. Now... If the bracket was a bit bigger, it's also a great idea to grab your scientific calculator and actually check this. So if I did 6 uh, minus 4 times negative 2, I get an answer. Okay, so there's a small error in this case. So it's a good thing that I checked my answer. I got an answer of 14. Okay, so clearly something went wrong. So let's go back and look at this question. Uh, what I did wrong is that I wrote 6 minus 8 over here. This should actually be 6 plus 8. Okay, uh, and of course this changes this to 14, right? So that is the importance. As I said at the beginning, you want to have a calculator close by. This is the reason why. In case any mistake is made, you want to be able to immediately check your work with your calculator. Okay, all right. Um, in the case of the second question, I don't think there's any mistake there. 3 times 4 minus 3 times 4, and yes, I do receive a result of 0. So now I can be confident because I've checked with my calculator that both of my results are 100% correct. Okay, so I can get myself a little smiley face there. But that's the whole point, right? You always, I, I don't want to lose you on the importance of this statement right here. You always deal with the brackets first. Right? You deal with the brackets first, you get them out of the way, and only then do you proceed with the rest, with the rest of the question. Now, how do you do that? Because I do want to finish this question off. Well, let me just quickly reset here. Okay, and let's continue. This is how you finish up the rest of the question. So, the rest of the question, uh, really, once you're done your brackets, uh, it gets sort of clumped together. Right? 
Uh, and when I say this, uh, I mean it gets sort of placed together as what's called the Q-step, right? In the Q-step, both of the brackets get put in wherever they were in the original question, and then the whole question is evaluated. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, again, you want to exclude any parenthesis. We already did this in the bracket step, but now you want to do it at a question level. Um, and again, we're going to go uh, over all this on the next slide. Okay? So we will actually be doing a question with this. Um, the second idea is whenever you come to a bracket, you write out whatever result you calculated, but you also label the bracket. This is really helpful for checking your work uh, in the future, just to make sure uh, you're at the right spot. Um, at this point, circle within the Q step, uh, you include the bracket results, and then you evaluate each circle on its own. If you need to regroup, you can go ahead and do that. And then you check the final answer. Uh, and if possible, you check the entire question using a scientific calculator. So let's go into exactly how we really do this, okay? All right, so here's my question. Uh, let's first put all the information we already know. So uh, there were two brackets in this original question. Uh, let me go with the yellow and green like before. So here's my yellow bracket. Here's my green bracket. Okay, uh, and we actually did evaluate these. So we know that this is good. This was called bracket one, right? So now we're pretty much doing this question from the top again. Um, sure, we'll stick with purple then. Right, and we said B1 was equal to six minus four times negative two. Um, we also circled within B1, so let's go ahead and do that. And we received an answer of 6 plus 8, which is equal to 14. Okay? And now we undergo a similar process for question number 2. Uh, let's go ahead and do that then. So B2, we have 3 times 4 minus 3 times 4. Uh, and of course, we need to circle. Right? So we've done that. Uh, we go to B2. This is equal to 12 minus 12. This is equal to 0. So this is where we were uh, at the end of the slide where this was done in red. So at the end of not this slide, but this slide. Again, we have the same results of 14 and 0, the same circling. Uh, so that was where we were. Now let's move on using the directions from this slide. Now the first thing I said was that we need to write out the whole Q step without any parenthesis, right? Um, just like when we were writing out the individual bracket step. So this is gen generally the most time consuming step. So let's go ahead and do the most time consuming step right now together. So Q equals three divide by four times six uh, times negative two. Again, do not write parenthesis, just write the, the sign that's there. Uh, divide by 3 uh, plus negative 4 uh, divide by negative 7 uh, times 14 minus negative 3 um, and now we get to times and now we find the location of the first bracket right which is by chance a 14 so we write times 14 Okay, but as soon as we do this, we want to label this as our result from B1. Now, why do we do this? Let's say you made a mistake. You can come back, you can find out where you labeled it, you can easily retrace your work. So it's the neatest way of, of regurgitating the work that you've already done. Let's keep going, guys. Divide by negative 7 minus negative 3. Oh, we've got some parentheses in there. We can't have that. Divide by negative 7 times, uh, that's not going to be times, that's minus negative 3 times negative 2, divide by negative 12. Let's move on to the second line here, times negative 2 
uh, times 4 minus 5 times 10 times 2 divide by negative 15 um, times 3 minus negative 3 uh, times, again, we reach the location of B2. We put the 0 in there. We label this as B2. Um, I'm going to go through here and label that as B2 right there. Actually, maybe not. Let's not do that. Um, we'll just label it below as B2. Maybe that's a bit neater. Yep, so we'll just label it below here as B2. And then we keep going. Divide by negative 4 times negative 3 plus 1 uh, minus 5 times 6 divide by 5 times 6. Uh, we did have a couple of parentheticals in there, so you want to get rid of all those. Boom. Whew. So we've listed out the entire Q step. We can finally cross this off. Right? That was a real racket. So let's keep going. Uh, oh, we've done this as well. Good. Now we have to circle the Q step. Right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to circle the Q step. We're going to circle within this now. Um, so 3 divided by 4 times 6. All this is good until the negative 3 when we finally reach a plus sign. Uh, same idea, good, 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 all the way till here. Same idea, looks good until we reach here. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Oh, that closed too early. Uh, yeah, so, so far, no pluses or minuses. Uh, looks like we can continue the circle. You can just uh, draw two open-ended circles like this to show that it's continuing. Right? Uh, that's a minus sign there, so now the whole party stops, uh, and we start again. Okay, and we just avoid the, the little mark there because I don't want to write on top of my own writing. Ta-da! All circled. Okay? Um, and now you can just uh, evaluate each circle. Uh, if you need to, you can definitely regroup at the stage. Uh, in fact, regrouping is probably going to make our life a lot easier. So in the case of the first circle, first of all, it's going to be negative. We know this because there's a negative sign. Uh, 3 divided by 3 doesn't matter. Not going to do anything. Uh, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. Uh, second circle, uh, 14 divided by 7 is 2. Uh, 2 times 4 is equal to 8. It's going to be positive because we have two negative signs. Third circle, 14 divided by 7 is 2. Uh, 2 times 3 is equal to 6. Uh, three negatives means the answer is also going to be negative here. Um, the fourth circle, we have um, 3 times 2, which is 6, times 2, which is 12. 12 divided by 12 just gives us nothing. So we have a 4, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 negatives, so it's a minus 4. Um, the next circle, we have um, 5 times 3 divided by 15, so all that just gives us nothing. Uh, 10 times 2 is 20. And we have a positive because there's two negative signs. Uh, the next circle over, it's a zero because we have a zero of our multiplying numbers. Um, it doesn't matter whether, whether it's positive or negative, but in this case, the number is going to be positive because we have four negative signs. Um, plus one can stay. And then the last circle, it's um, the same situation like uh, three times four minus three times four. It's now five, divided by, uh, five times six divided by five times six. Um, and of course, five divided by five is nothing. 6 times 6 is 36, and it's going to be a minus 36 here. Okay? 
and now we put all these numbers together. Yeah. Uh, so we have here uh, negative eight, uh, 3 plus 8 minus 6 minus 4 plus 20 plus 0 plus 1 minus 36. Let's go ahead and put all that together. Uh, so minus 3 plus 8 gives us uh, 5. 5 minus 6 gives us negative 1. Negative 4, uh, sorry, negative 1 minus 4 gives us negative 5. Negative 5 plus 20 gives us uh, positive 15. Positive 15 plus 0 is positive 15. Plus 1 is positive 16. Minus 36 is equal to negative 20.